UFC 298 just finished and you might as well not subscribe to us because we spoil all these cards as we got the main event right again. Taporia knocking out Volkanovski. We're gonna start with that fight, but we're gonna go over the entire main card. Let us know in the comments if you like us to just go over the main event or the entire card. But today we'll try going over the entire main card. And when Taporia landed that overhand right on Volkanovski, we weren't shocked. We weren't shocked. I thought it was extremely hype. And honestly, Volkanovski was starting to get a couple shots off, but I was extremely confident that Taporia would eventually land the shot. And it was just crazy to see Volkanovski going out cold. Taporia threw a lot of right hands, but he finally landed one on the chin and Volkanovski just went out cold, which was crazy. Yeah, so in the first round, Volkanovski did what I thought he should have done, which was against Taporia, you cannot make it strictly boxing. You have to make it kickboxing and boxing. So he was using a lot of kicks. They weren't really landing, especially the high ones to the, to the body or the head, to the head, but honestly, that was a really good game plan from him. I think Volkanovski should have utilized the back leg kick a little bit better because Taporia has a very big boxing stance, but Taporia was very patient in the first round, was landing the better leg kicks in my opinion. Yeah, you know, it was surprising to see Taporia go with the leg kicks as his tactic, but as you mentioned with the kicks, I'm pretty sure Volkanovski's camp knew that out of the shots that Taporia gets hurt by, I think two times he's gotten hurt badly by left high kicks. So. He kind of almost learned what Makachev did. Go low, go to the body, and then go to the head, make it more confusing. But Taporia seemed to be ready for that. I mean, Volkanovski did land a couple good body kicks, but as you mentioned before, that leg kick from Taporia really started his game plan. And then eventually, when Volkanovski was throwing that jab, as he was landing a lot, a lot of jabs, but when he threw that jab, Volkanovski or Taporia slipped, threw the shot, threw a couple shots, and then knocked him out. Which was yeah, in this, I felt like Volkanovski was honestly having better success on the feet in terms of the boxing in the second round, but we were both waiting for that overhand right to land, and that, I mean, that just shows how skilled this guy really is. That is a picture-perfect shot. A lot of people, when they see that shot, like, oh, overhand right. The accuracy it took to land that shot, because Volkanovski was, at least a little bit from what I remember, trying to get that shoulder up, but it wasn't up all the way. He just sniped his chin. Well, that just shows the importance of cage control. Volkanovski was backed up against the cage, ended up squaring up a little bit, and then as he was throwing his shot, I think he was throwing a counter right, he ended up leaning towards that left side, and so he ran into the shot as well, which just obviously makes it a lot harder of a shot than it already was. Yeah, I honestly think, you can say if you agree with me or not, I think he has the best boxing in the UFC. I, I would say so too, and you know, one of the big parts of Zaporia is that he has that Greco-Roman background, he has that grappling background, so he isn't afraid to let the hands go because he understands that he can defend the takedowns. I mean, uh, the Bryce Mitchell fight was a perfect example of that, and I'd have to agree with you. I think he has great boxing, but I think it all starts with the wrestling and not fearing the takedown. He has so much power on the feet, and with Taporia, I think the UFC has their next big star. Spain is gonna be a big market for the UFC, and this guy is top five pound for pound in my opinion. Yeah. I don't see any featherweight beating him. I don't think Holloway beats him. I don't think, uh, Yair probably has the best shot with the kicks, but even I then, I, I, I still don't see him beating him. Taporia does have the grappling advantage over Yair. Uh, other though than those two, I mean the featherweight division is so lacking, which is why I'm gonna we're gonna go over this now. I just feel like it's a good time. I believe they should run it back because of lack of options. But in my opinion, Volkanovski doesn't really deserve it just because. I mean he deserves it from his featherweight background, but you know he's off coming off of two straight losses, both by knockout. Yeah, like whenever you you know just think of Volkanovski's featherweight resume, you think okay, well you know this guy's been a long champion, he should get the rematch. But it's kind of hard to give a guy a rematch when he just got knocked out cold twice in a row. It just doesn't feel the same. I think that if Volkanovski didn't lose to Makachev, then it would seem easier to give Volkanovski the rematch. But now that he lost twice, it kind of feels a little bit weird, but you know, it is the featherweight division. You should just look only at featherweight resume. And I think that Volkanovski is gonna be the clear fight. And I think Taporia versus Volkanovski in Spain would be a big fight. Yeah, I, get, I agree. And Taporia, I think the only guy who could really beat him would be someone who's good in the clinch. I saw Volkanovski having a little bit of success in the clinch, but he's just so all around. And yeah. maybe he is showing maybe the next era, or new era of strikers and, or of mixed martial artists in the UFC being 27. He's got maybe five or six years in his prime. He could go down as one of the best ever. I really believe that. And yeah, I think he could easily. All right, moving on now to the co-main event, Costa versus Whitaker. 
We both had Whitaker at 3027. I thought that in the first round, Whitaker was obviously winning. I do feel like people put the close to a great wheel kick. I don't know how Whitaker didn't drop from that, but he stumbled a bit. But if you saw Whitaker against Duplessis, Whitaker couldn't even strike back. He was just, there's a difference of Whitaker being stumbled. Whitaker was throwing back at him, which for me kind of meant that he wasn't as hurt as maybe most people believed he was. And Whitaker's leg kicks the entire fight were good, especially in that first round. Costa has some success with the, a lot of success with the jab, mostly in the first round, but Whitaker outlanded him. And I just don't think that in the first round, you could give Costa that round. Yeah, I mean, it was a very competitive round, but Whitaker was hitting him with some hard shots. I mean, Whitaker has this habit of doubling up with the left hand, and that really messed up, uh, messed with Costa. But Costa actually hung in there with Whitaker. He did a really good job against Whitaker, but the leg kick from Whitaker was a big story. The jabs from both guys, both guys had amazing jabs. I think Whitaker landed more shots than Costa in that first round. I don't think the stun was enough to take it, but I still feel like Whitaker took the last two rounds. <clears throat> you could have easily scored it for Costa, but I feel like a lot of people may be more biased just because Whitaker wore the damage more. Yeah, uh, Costa's kind of like Mar Marlon Chito Vera where he just doesn't really wear the damage. And, you know, second round, we'll go move on to second round. Whitaker outpointed him. Costa didn't really have much success in that round. So he wasn't throwing the kicks like he was in the first round. And Costa in the third round, you would have assumed maybe he would have made it more of a dog fight, which I thought he should have because Costa had the chin advantage and the power advantage, but he didn't. And Whitaker would blitz in, maybe fake a jab, go with a hook, or maybe double up sometimes with the front hand. And for me, he won two and three but easily. Even if you didn't give him one, I still think you give him the fight. Yeah, Costa was doing a good job at the beginning of the third round, but towards the middle, that's when Whitaker ended up taking over and I scored a 30-27. It was a competitive fight, but it was a 30-27 in my opinion. Yep. All right, moving on to the featured bout, Ian Machado Gary, I'm not gonna forget the Machado, and Jeff Neal. Personally, I thought Neal was gonna win the fight initially from my prediction. He thought that Gary would win, Gary won. Uh, it wasn't a, a standout performance from either of them. We've seen better from both of them. Ian Gary, I mean, he's just not, he was just weak. So he didn't, he got clinched up a lot and held against the cage. He didn't want to get in the boxing with Jeff Neal at all. Ian Gary's tactic was to jab at range, maybe throw a couple knees down the middle. And um, if, you, if you were listening to the commentary, the commentary were so biased toward Ian Gary. Personally, I thought that Jeff Neal Definitely won. Ian Gary definitely won two. I thought Jeff Neal definitely won one. The round three was very close. I actually gave it to Neal just because I didn't rate Gary's knees. I didn't rate much of what Gary was landing in the third round. But the commentators would make you believe that Gary was landing crisp shots in the third round. You cannot name me one shot from Ian Gary that landed crisp. There were a couple of crosses from Gary from Neal that were, I feel like. And that was enough because it was a bad fight. Well, I thought Ian Gary won. I thought Ian Gary won the last two rounds. It was kind of a snooze fest, to be honest. Ian Gary was, I mean, you know, some people might not like this tactic, but ended up winning the fight. He was staying from out of range, kind of circling around and using his kicks to keep Neil away. You know, some people might not like it. They might say he's running away, but at the end of the day, you know, that's part of the rules. And he was keeping Neil away and trying to stay out of that boxing range. And yeah, like I said, regardless if you like it, the tactic or not, that was a smart tactic from Ian Machetro Cherry, and he won the fight. Kind of a boring fight. I yeah, agree. so enough said about that one. Let's move on to Cejudo and Marab Davalashvili. We both had Marab 29 28. I think that's pretty you know, unanimous for most people. Cejudo landed a good shot in the first round, which was a hook on Marab. Marab took it pretty well. I feel like sometimes there are shots that kind of wake you up, and I feel like that was it for Marab. But Marab's pace in the fight was incredible. I mean, Cejudo is skinny fat when he gets in there, so he's weaker, so he's getting taken down by these guys who don't have the wrestling pedigree that he does. And Marab's pace was just getting onto him. Cejudo rates himself too high as a striker, and I feel like that ends up being his downfall. Where's the wrestling? I, you're an Olympic wrestler. How are you not out-wrestling these guys? Yeah, the first round was competitive. Uh, I gave it to Cejudo because of that shot. The second and third round, Marab was very impressive. I mean, taking the wrestling to Cejudo, we mentioned this in our prediction that Cejudo thinks he's better than he actually is, and it was proved here. I mean, you know, we were talking about this. John Jones has gone taken down twice, and he's I mean, not yeah. anywhere near the level of Cejudo, or in terms of pedigree, right? Cejudo has that Olympic gold medal. Yeah. But Cejudo gets taken down a lot, and he got taken down, and that only gassed him out more, and then Marab is just relentless. It's, it's crazy. I think that Sean O'Malley fight will be very interesting just because Sean O'Malley does have that knockout power. Maybe Marab will be a little more reluctant to come in, but 
Marab really impressed me with his fight today. Yeah. I mean, his cardio is just insane. I think Marab's wrestling is improving. I mean, he took down Cejudo. He struggled taking down Jan last time. His pace favors five rounds, but I think his striking is even improving as well. He landed a couple good shots on Cejudo, but Cejudo is just not there. Other than the leg kick, what does he have on the feet? Literally nothing. Cejudo's good in the clinch, but never clinches. He's a strange fighter, and Marab should be next for the title. And, I mean, he seems to have garnered a big fan base, which will be big versus O'Malley, who, you know, we've made a video on O'Malley. We're probably going to make one again, but that would be the next fight for the title. Anyways, last card... Fight on the main card, we'll go over this quickly. Anthony Hernandez versus Roman Kopilov. Roman Kopilov's got great kicks, did really well and won the first round in my opinion, but Anthony Hernandez got to his back, almost had the choke, and then Roman Kopilov tried to get up and gave up his back again, and then he linked up the choke all the way in and got this up. Yeah, I mean, Anthony Hernandez was just relentless with the pressure, and so I get, eventually that's going to lead to some opportunities for him to get the chokes. Roman Kopilov, Fought very well, but then he tried to rush the get up. He was doing great with the takedown yeah. defense, rushed the get up and got himself in trouble. And you know, when it comes to MMA, one mistake can cost you the fight. Yeah. So that's our all of what we had to say today. Uh, we might make a video about Taporia because I honestly believe he's the next star. Yeah. And, and we, we said it before too. The on our prediction video. Yeah. That was literally the title of our prediction. That video. he's the next star, and he is now. He knocked out Alexander Volkanovski. Alexander Volkanovski knocked out a full camp Volkanovski in the second round. This guy is insane, and honestly, he's going to really bring the UFC to a new level. I think Spain's a massive market, and I'm excited for UFC. I'm excited for Ilya Teporia, and that was an awesome fight.